Michelle and I will be visiting about also this Friday, August the 9th, and she'll be at this restaurant right here from 2.30 to 3.15. Now, how many people do we have in here? 15. See, we gotta have a nice crowd at this restaurant, okay? Because we want the people to know that we support our next senator, and Michelle Nunn, if she's willing to come down here to visit with us, we need to visit with her. So tell us, not through email, because they want this to be uh, not a staged event, and it's not supposed to be a Democratic Party event. It's supposed to be an event with the people of Valdosta, so she can shake hands and, you know, answer a few questions or two. So it's Friday, August the 9th, from 2.30 to 3.15. It's a great opportunity to support our next senator, and it's also a great opportunity to support a local business person, okay? All right, bring a friend who also will be there. Please, any more hands? Okay, all right, thanks. It's gonna be here. It's going to be next door in the cafe, in the cafe. So that's why we need as many people as we can. What, what is the purpose of the She's running for the Senate. You. Michelle Nunn. Who? Michelle Nunn. Oh, yeah. I'm old, my mind. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Um, on another election front, um, the Democratic Party of Georgia will be electing a new chairman on the 31st of this month. And your representatives from Lowndes County are Dr. Marks, myself, and Linda Ray, as well as Laverne. Since Laverne is the party secretary, she gets to vote too. So we'll be electing, um, choosing among um, Dubose Porter, Mary Squires, RJ Hadley, and Doug Stoner. Those are the four candidates. So if you have some opinion about one of those candidates, you think one of them is better than another, um, please talk to one of your representatives, let us know, or let us know your concerns in any event. This year we've been having um, an expanded speaker series, which has been really great, groovy, excellent, and tonight we have another excellent speaker. Uh, Corey Hall is my friend from a very long time, um, and in fact, he spoke with us uh, a way a long time ago when we were up the street at Hildegard's and he talked about t Blast and the pros and cons of t Blast and what t Blast would bring us if we voted for it and what would happen if we didn't. Well, we didn't vote for it, and um, we still have road construction projects going on, and he's here to tell us about what the MPO does, how um, federal dollars and state dollars come to our community, and how that relates to transportation, I'm hoping that he's going to tell us about those cool new gooey bike paths. Um, so please welcome my friend, Corey Hall. Okay, and we have a hand up. Thank you, Gretchen. Um, can everybody hear me? Well, back there in the back? Good, okay. Um, well, tonight I want to. I'm going to talk to you guys about what is the Metropolitan Planning Organization, and really it's, it's we're more of a transportation planning organization. Um, that's really more the way to think about us. Um, we are housed at the Southern Georgia Regional Commission, and how many of you are aware of what the Southern Georgia Regional Commission is? We got like two or three hands, that's it. Um, the Southern Georgia Regional Commission is a state designated agency of 18 member counties from Waycross to Douglas to Tifton, down here to Valdosta, and everything in between. We have um, an aging program run out of our Waycross office. Um, we have um, a small business loan program. We have um, a planning program where we do land use planning for a lot of our smaller counties that do not have the capability to hire professional staff on hand so they hire the regional commission and one person maybe serves as the land use planner for five or six counties um, i do transportation planning we have a workforce investment training uh, program uh, that trains individuals um, for workforce um, Primarily truck drivers and nurses right now are the two big programs. Uh, we also have a mapping um, 
program that creates all kinds of fancy maps for our local governments. Um, those are just some of the highlights of the things that we do. Um, plus, there's probably a thousand other things uh, that we all get involved in. Um, but I'm with the Valas Allowance Metropolitan Planning Organization. We are a federally designated uh, agency here in Valas and Lowndes County that are charged with developing and maintaining transportation projects and policies in this community and in this region. Um, we were created back in 2003 uh, after Valas became a metropolitan city, reached a population of 50,000. And here actually recently we've just begun uh, integrating uh, Brooks County into the Metropolitan Planning Organization as well. They, after the 2010 census, they reached a population threshold of just in the Troopville area um, that was able to designate them as an urban area as well. So they're a part of the Valas Allowance Metropolitan Planning Organization along with Berrien and Lanier counties as well. There's a lot of growth up around in those counties around Goody Air Force Base. So some of the things, I've actually been somewhat well prepared for this talk tonight. I actually spent the last three days writing our annual report. Um, that is something that you guys will be sending out here by the end of the month. Um, so I encourage you to look at that information. Um, it's going through its proofreading stages now. But um, it was actually kind of timely for me. I was able to review my last year of what we've done um, and kind of prepare for tonight. So some of the things that we've actually been doing, we, we do big transportation plans, and we, yes, we work on the big projects that you see, but there's a lot of things that we work on that you don't necessarily see, not like the Highway 84 overpass down here. We have um, an award-winning freight planning and report series that we've developed um, over the last four or five years. We've looked at what industries in our community for economic development purposes are using freight transportation. Four of the five or six top fastest growing industries in Lowndes County are all transportation dependent. Transportation warehousing, agriculture, uh, manufacturing, and uh, wholesale trade. Those are all transportation dependent. So we've got to have a transportation infrastructure that meets the needs of those growing industries. We look at freight, or I'm not going to say freight, but commercial vehicle crashes um, this year. Looking at specifically those larger vehicles that are on our roads and where, where are they having crashes and what types of crashes are they having. We're going to take those, the information from that report and plug it into our next long range plan. We identified in that report six locations throughout Bob Austin Lowndes County where there are high commercial vehicle crashes and we don't currently have a project slated for those uh, intersections. So we'll be evaluating those intersections to see what kind of improvements we can be doing um, in those areas. We also looked at the freight rail impact of Valdos, on Bob Austin Lowndes County that our railroads have. And one of the things we found is that a lot of the businesses that abut or are next to the railroad don't actually utilize the railroad. Uh, that is a lot of infrastructure that, and usage that is somewhat going to waste uh, because they're not using that railroad infrastructure. Um, right now, I, if I recall the report correctly, it's over $700 million in additional sales could, could occur in this community if those businesses were using uh, the rail efficiently. Every year we conduct a, an annual crash report looking at all crashes, not just commercial vehicle crashes. Um, every year we develop what are our top 20 locations in our community for crashes. And this year was no different. We got a new list of 20 locations. And every year there always is a new road. There, you would think that that list would repeat itself every year. But it actually fluctuates quite a bit, which is very interesting. Um, so this year we've got more locations on our crash report that we're going to be plugging into our as we're selecting our projects for our 2040 transportation plan. Um, I'm going to talk more about that transportation plan. I keep referencing it, but I'll talk a little, a little more about it in a minute. How many people, take a guess as to how many people commute into, well I shouldn't say that. How many people 
commute into Lowndes County for a job every day? Throughout 20,000. Sorry? 20,000. Higher. 85,000. You're, you're a little high. <laughs> 40,000. 36,000. 40,000, very close. 36,000 people come into uh, Lowndes County every day. This year we developed new commuting pattern maps to look at where those people are coming from in our uh, region. And we're everybody, and take another county, for example, Atkinson County in our region. Where are people coming into that county from and where are they going to? So we try to look at the, our counties comprehensively um, and not just in our state. We go across the state line, look at the Florida counties. Where are people coming into uh, Georgia? Are people actually coming, leaving Georgia and going to Florida? Um, in some cases, they are. If you get over by Jacksonville, that is the city that draws employees from Georgia. Um, so we do look at commuting pattern maps. That's something else on our website that you can look at. Bike and pedestrian plans, something uh, Gretchen mentioned. We um, do all sorts of bike and pedestrian planning. As I said, we're a transportation planning organization. We're not just highways. We're public transit. We're freight transportation. We're railroads. Uh, we do get a little bit into airports. Um, not a whole lot, but um, multimodal is a way to think of us. We look at everything, how we move goods and people. Um, so we look at bike and pedestrian uh, plans as well. We're actually hoping to invite a new regional bike and pedestrian plan this coming year. But this last year we looked at and uh, did a video tour of our region and you can look that up on YouTube to see what it is like to ride on our state bicycle routes through our region. Um, of course, we did it in a car um, because we it's quite a bit of a distance to get all the way across our region. It's a, almost a two and a half hour drive in a car. So, um, But uh, we did that video so you can see what it is like to ride a right on those bicycle routes. We also made recommendations. Um, Patterson Street here is a bicycle route. Um, did anyone know that? <laughs> there, there is nothing that says that it is a bicycle route. Um, so those, we have made some recommendations to our local governments and to the state DOT as to what they can do to promote bicycling, promote safety on these routes as well. Um, we also this year was unique for us. We produced what we what we're calling a state of rural public transit in the region report. We had, of our 18 counties in this region, nine have public transit. Um, just like here in Lowndes County, we have MIDS. Um, they uh, provide rural public transit for all of Lowndes County. It's a demand response system. You call up 24 hours in advance. You schedule yourself a ride. So nine counties do that in our region. But we wanted to look and see what is the impact of those nine transit systems in an entirety on our region. So that's what our state of rural public transit looked at, um, that report looked at this year. I can, one little hint, the biggest thing was, is the data has big holes in it. So you'll look at some of the data and you'll see major dips and dives from year to year. And that is one thing we're working on with the state to try to correct. How do we get better data from our uh, local governments? Um, but that is one thing we're looking at is public transit. As we're dis discussing uh, public transportation in, here in Velasta, uh, three or four years ago, we led an effort at the MPO is to discuss what would public transit look like here in Valdosta as a, on an urban fixed route, typical bus system. We chose, at that time our local governments chose not to fund a public transit system. Um, so we uh, currently only have uh, MIDS, Lowndes County Transit, as our only transit service right now. But as we develop our 2040 transportation plan over the next two years, public transit is gonna become a discussion. Um, I'm not going to drive it. It's actually going to be the citizens. That is our number one request on our website is public transit. People want to know how to get around Valdosta. Um, so I know we always have, we're always having people come and ask us about it, talk to us about it. 
So the citizens are really driving it already. It's not necessarily the plan transportation planners. In our preparations for our uh, long-range plan that we're going to be developing next year, we, went, we decided to go back and begin looking at our where have we been in transportation in our community. And I want to applaud the uh, Lowndes County Museum, they actually have developed a brand new website, if you have not been on their website yet. Uh, they actually have a whole section devoted to transportation in uh, Valdosta and Lowndes County. So we decided to compliment them and we went back to 1964 and published all of the transportation plans that we could find that had been developed for Lowndes County and Valdosta. I believe that there were a total of five uh, transportation plans that have been done since 1964. There may have been others. Um, I, we couldn't find them necessarily. And there may have been ones before 1964. Those I could not find either. But uh, we're still looking. And if you're aware of one, let us know. But we went back and looked to, to see what projects have been completed. Um, several projects in that 1964 plan are not completed. They're still in our current transportation plans. For transportation plans don't get done in six months, a year, five years. It takes 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years sometimes for these transportation projects to get built. Um, so that's, it was really interesting going back and looking at what those projects were. And, um, we've identified, to the best of my knowledge, since I'm not a, a, a local and a transplant, what projects have been completed. Uh, some of them back in 1964, they just said, we're going to build a road between Hay High Red and Moody Air Force Base. Well, I, I don't know what road that is, and <laughs> their map was non-existent for that one. So there were some, some interesting uh, choices, and I'm not really sure what, the, what they meant. All of this is kind of leading up to, we go through all these uh, interim plans, look at all these different topics to lead up to what we do every five years. 